Sunday brings with it the Carabao Cup final between Chelsea and Liverpool as we take a look at their stats for the season for 2022. In fact, the calendar year in all competitions when the two sides have met in the Premier League this season. It's been draws on both occasions, but there is lots to discuss when it comes to this final on Sunday. And uh, here to talk more about it, we have Craig Burley, Jules Theron, Stuart Robson and Don Hutchison as well. Craig, I want to start by talking about Lukaku. Will he play? Should he start? No. Uh, not uh, unless there's an uh, uh, outbreak of something. Don't see why he should start. I mean, I believe they're all fit from uh, from their exploits the other day. Havertz is starting to show up. Uh, no. I mean, there's absolutely no reason in this world. There's no sentiment for him starting. There's no... It's not a... This is not a kindergarten here. This is a big cup competition. Yes, it's the... Not the, it's the lowest one in terms of domestically in England, in terms of the, where they, what they'd want to win, but it's still important. And so, no, he has done nothing to suggest. In fact, if he was named in the team, I think it would raise eyebrows in that dressing room with the other players. That's how bad it has gotten for me. Would you agree with that, Robbo? Absolutely. I saw him play in the flesh against Plymouth in the Cup where he didn't touch the ball that often in that game. The crowd started to get onto him. He looked lacking in confidence. When the ball came into him, he wasn't getting hold of it. He wasn't make the, making the right runs in the box. I think they had Ziyech cross the, must have crossed the ball about 15 times in the first half and Lukaku never got anywhere near it. So he's a player that needs to play with confidence. He's not playing with confidence at the moment and it would be a, a, a major surprise if he's picked in the side. And I think it would be a mistake if he's picked in the side by Tuchel. Would you say that too, Don, that it would be a mistake if Lukaku's in the side? It would be, Kay, on current form. I mean, he's, he's lacking so much confidence. Um, you know, it depends what Thomas Tuchel sees. He might see a player that looks hungry. I mean, I didn't agree with what Thomas Tuchel said the other day. He said he looks mentally and physically tired. I mean, dear me, he's played 10 games. Play 10 games and you're tired. And you're physically and mentally tired. I don't get that one whatsoever. We, me and Craig talked about the lack of touches. Um, one touch, well, two touches in the first half, one from a kickoff, seven in total. That is just ridiculous. That tells me two things. That tells me Lukaku's either been a bit lazy, not showing for the ball, or the players don't actually trust him, so they're not putting the ball into him quick enough. Um, I would be stunned. I, I, I think it's more with Thomas Tuchel picking Havertz and probably picking Timo Werner because Timo Werner's been quite good against Liverpool, stretching the play. I see that more than Lukaku starting. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Jules? I agree with the boys. The only thing is, is the physical aspect of it. And when you, when you come up against Virgil van Dijk and Joel Matip or Ibrahim Konate, one of the two with van Dijk, I think Harvest is a lightweight, let's be honest here. I think Lukaku and that presence, that physicality could be, could be useful. And also because Liverpool would play with a really high line and, and there would be a lot of space to run in behind. And for that, Lukaku, OK, Van is, is another option, but I think Lukaku can, can run in behind far more than Kai Harvest for example, Kai Havertz has more confidence and the confidence might be an issue and, and just for that it might be the only reason and it's a very right reason to put him on the bench and keep him on the bench. I think he was on the bench against Lille to ease the pressure and for people to stop talking about the Palace game and what happened with the seven touches etc. So I, I can see Tuchel bringing him back for that game, uh, just for the a pure physical side of things for Chelsea, especially with Reece James coming back as well in the team, quite likely to be to be a starter for that final and and putting the crosses in for Romelu Lukaku. Uh, but again, I agree with the boys. I could also see Kai Havertz easily keeping his place in the team now. You, yeah. I mean, I, I understand there's a running in behind, but you got you got to get the guy to run at the right times and with the right desire and pace and aggression. And I would slightly come at it from the opposite way. I think that mm -hmm. physical presence would be a comfort to Van Dijk and Matip or Kanate, probably Matip. How? Well, because Van Dijk has that all the time. He sees it and he's quite happy to get tight or drop off or they're two big physical defenders. I, I think they would rather, I think that's easier for them than having the movement of somebody coming in and out and dropping there and then people making runs from wide to in. Different players. Lukaku's more static, certainly at the moment. He's very static. And I think that would be an easy... Yeah, OK, it's a bit more to worry about if a ball comes in the box. But as a generalisation, you know, Havertz and Ziyech and whoever, 
whoever plays there have a bit more movement. I think we're starting to play like Lukaku and two big, really good, powerful centre halves for Liverpool, particularly Van Dijk. I think he would just relish that. I think he, he would prefer to have that than people giving him some problems. You know, do I go into midfield? Do I have to drop in? Do I go with the runner? You know, all these sort of things that that what we'd call a false sort of number nine can give you. But we'll, we'll see which way he goes. But I can tell you, the, if the Chelsea fans uh, turn up at Wembley and they see Lukaku on the team sheet, they're not going to be uh, particularly pleased about it. I don't think they want him to play. Who needs the trophy more at this point, Liverpool or Chelsea? I, I think uh, I think Tuchel needs it. I don't think, look, none of them are getting the sack, right? So... Chelsea are in the title race, still. Uh, sorry, Liverpool, it's tight. They're playing City in April. They're in the Champions League. Klopp has a million miles in the bank. Tuchel works for a different animal. Yeah, he's not, his job's not at threat. But no trophies, potentially, and there's a long way to go. And if they drift further away from the top teams in the league... It just puts more pressure on. So I say that Tuchel needs it more primarily because who he's working for. Uh, Liverpool are favourites in this one. It is two German tacticians going up against one another, but it's the odds makers going with Liverpool. Would you say that, Don? I would on current form, Kate. You'd have to say that. I think when you look at Liverpool, the only absentee uh, might be Firmino. Jota might make it, but even if Jota's injured they've played Mane through the middle in the last game Diaz off the left Salah off the right you look at the midfield it's sensational Thiago's in good form Jordan Henderson Fabinho the back four is the back four I think Keller will probably play in goal I think Jurgen Klopp's intimated that today I think for Chelsea's point of view there's a couple of worries uh, I'm not sure Ziyech is going to make it from his injury and Kovacic who limped off during the week against Lille as well they're the two concerns but he'll have Mason Mount back and he's got different options but I think on current form if the game sort of goes how you think it's going to go, Liverpool win. What's your prediction, Robbo? Yeah, I agree with Don. I think Liverpool will win. At the moment, their front three, whoever that front three is, are playing brilliantly. And, and Don just mentioned Diaz coming in on that left-hand side. If Mane plays through the middle and the two front players, Firmino and Jota, aren't fully fit, uh, Salah's in great form. They're going to play a high-energy midfield against uh, probably with Jorginho coming in for Kovacic and Conte. Conte was brilliant in the midweek against Lille, but he's going to be up against it with three Liverpool players in there. Uh, I can the, the one weakness for Liverpool, and I'll always say it, is defensively, Alex Alexander-Arnold, for me, cannot defend. And if Chelsea keep attacking down that left-hand side, they can cause him all sorts of problems because in 1v1 situations and his positional play is really poor, Alexander-Arnold. Who wins it for you, Jules? I think I think Liverpool are, I have to be favourite, even if it's slight favourite, considering the form and the run of form that they've been having and scoring goals for fun. I think Chelsea, when it comes to finals, OK, they lost the FA Cup 1 to Leicester, but the Champions League 1, the Club World Cup 1, the Super Cup 1, and then this one coming as well. I, I have to say, I fancy Chelsea winning it. It would be a, a narrow score. I can see them winning 1-0, for example. Uh, that's, what they, that's what they did in the Champions League final to City. And I can see them using a similar tactical plan against Liverpool in this League Cup final to win 1-0 as well. Have you got a favourite? Draw. <laughs> and then who wins? <laughs> well, I, I think Liverpool are just starting to get that bit of pace about their game again. Mane's got back in amongst the goals. Salah's brushed off the African Cup of Nations disappointment. Uh, yeah, they've played some weaker teams domestically recently. Struggled for long periods against Norwich, it has to be said. Uh, obviously demolished Leeds. Chelsea rock solid for most part. By a smidge, I'm just going to say Liverpool. All right. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.